everyone. Welcome this week to the overflow. I pray that you are keeping safe in this time of lockdown, that you are using the time, you know, to your advantage, that you're growing in the Lord, that you're getting deeper in your relationship with the Lord. Amen. You know, I want to share something um, that really touched my heart this week. And I was looking at this Christian movie and there was a guy playing the part of the devil. And, you know, he was saying something that we know, eh, but somehow it struck my heart. He was saying, you know, I am in this battle and I'm fighting with God. I'm in a war with God for the souls of men. And he was rejoicing because he says destruction is going to come. And when the destruction comes, I will gain all these souls, you know, of men. And it, 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 it just struck me because it's something that we know. But do we stay aware of the fact that every day that we live, every moment while we are alive, souls are slipping into hell. Hell is an, it is for eternity. When you get there, there's no coming back out, you know. And so when you think about that hell, people are slipping into hell every day. And this is the focus of the enemy. This is his mindset. This is what he lives for, to, to grab the souls of men. It makes you wonder, what should we be doing if we are supposed to be laboring alongside God? If we are supposed to be a part of this war, then we are supposed to be snatching souls out of hell snatching souls that are on their way and on their path to hell we are supposed to be snatching them out and this just awakened something in me because you know there's this scripture in the bible that says it says that hell hath enlarged herself it says that has opened up her mouth without measure. It's as if hell just keeps enlarging itself to receive more people. And it made me wonder, why does hell have to enlarge itself? You want to know why? Because hell was never created for us. Hell, the scripture tells us, was prepared for the devil and his angels. It was never meant for us. But when we align ourselves with the things that, that pleases the devil and the things that go against God, we basically say, we want to be with you. We want to spend eternity with you. People accuse God of sending people to hell. God doesn't send people to hell. It is the master that we have chosen to follow that in for eternity, whichever master you have chosen to follow, that is the master that you will spend eternity with. You see? And so that is the reality. When we choose to do things that displease God, we are basically aligning ourselves with the enemy. But this just came home to me in, in, a, in a greater way, you know, this week when I started to think of how the enemy is rejoicing that he will get souls. You know, many times we sit down and we say, you know, that judgment is going to come upon the land and judgment and, and stuff like that. And it's almost like if we are in a relaxed mode when we speak about it, because as believers, you know, we know that God will have us. We know that God will keep us safe. But what about the souls of men what about those who will perish in it you know just um before i actually looked at that movie that same night i had this dream when i tell you one intense dream and i dreamt that i was like in a classroom setting and i was preaching not behind a pulpit but i was preaching and there were people there of all ages i could see the elderly i could see the young i could see the young adult i could see leaders you know, they were sitting at the front, you know, those who are leadership in the church. But we were in the classroom setting and I am praying and I'm preaching. Sorry, I'm preaching and I, I'm preaching that scripture in um, Second Chronicles 7 and, and 14. I'm preaching that scripture and I'm crying out with such passion. And I'm saying, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and I will 
forgive their sins and heal their land. And this was coming out with such passion. And I could look on the faces of the people and I could see tears running down their eyes. And then I slipped in and I started to say, the God that we serve, he is the kind of God that will hear us. He's not a God who will say this to us and then not be willing to do it. He said, I said, he is the kind of God that cares about us, that will do this thing. And in this dream, I'm passionate like that. And people started to fall on their knees and they started to cry. And even the leaders, we had some leaders sitting at the front and they came down from where they were and got on their knees and started to cry before the Lord. People, we have to cry out even for our land because it is easy to say, yes, judgment should come. Should it come? It should. Really and truly it should. For all the things that we have done to offend God, even as a nation, for the kind of bloodshed, yes, it should. But the people of God, he said, if my people, if those who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, he said, I will hear. I will hear. And so I want to call out to us to not just think about the fact that we will be in that safe place with God, regardless of what hits this nation or what hits the world, even what is going on right now. We know that God is taking care of us. But what about the souls of men who do not know the Lord? What about them? We have to have the heart that God has. Listen. There's this scripture that I think we take a lot of comfort in and we don't understand what, what Jesus could have meant by it. He told us, he said, enter at the narrow gate. He said, because wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. He said, and many there will be which will go in that way. He said, but narrow is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life. It said, and few there be that find it. And so when we hear that few will find it, we say, well, we are good. We are the few that has found it. But you know, if we are to have the heart of God, if we are to be laborers together with him, if we are in this war against the enemy who is snatching the souls of men and we are on God's side with this, I am saying, what should we do when we know that only few can find this narrow way? Why are there only few that could find it? You see, if it is that we have the heart of the Lord, then we will not just take comfort in that. We will say, let's help them find it. The few of us that have found this way, we need to get out there and start to draw people, draw their attention to this narrow way, call them into this narrow way. There's a scripture where the Lord says, he says, go out into the highways and the byways and compel them, compel them, call them, draw them in, entice them, get them to come in because this is where life is. This is a matter of life and death this is a matter of heaven and hell and it became that real you know the scripture said to us it says the harvest listen to what Jesus said he said the harvest is plenteous he looked out on the harvest he said look at how many souls are ripe to the picking he said but we have one problem he said the laborers are few I want to ask us is it that few are finding the way, that few are finding the narrow path because there are only few laborers? Because Jesus said that the harvest is ripe. Jesus said that it is plenteous. Jesus said that there are few laborers. And hear what he said. He said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Is the Lord speaking to you in this day, in these days, and showing you how the enemy, listen, I can't tell you what it does to me when I think of the enemy rejoicing at every soul that he gets into hell. When I think of the enemy rejoicing because he feels that he's winning this battle against God. You see, God is not a loser, people. He's not a loser. And we are here on the winning side with God, but we need to do what he does because you know what the Lord says. We need to capture his heart. 
The heart of God is that none should perish. That is his heart. That is his desire. Does he know that some will perish? Yes, they will. But we need to have his heart that, that, that says, let us fight for these souls. Let us go to that broad way and pull them and call them off of the broad way and tell them this is the way. This is the way. Walk ye in it. We need to have the heart that Jesus had. You know what the scripture says of Jesus? It says that when he looked on the multitude, it said he, he was moved with compassion when he looked on the multitude. He said because when he looked on them, he realized that they were confused and they were helpless. He said they were as sheep having no shepherd. Confused and helpless, scattered abroad, he said. That is what he saw when he looked at them. What do we see when we look on the multitudes? Do we just feel happy that we have found salvation? What of those who the enemy is saying that he has a trophy for? But you know, I discovered something. Eh? The devil will never be satisfied with the souls that he gets into hell. It will never satisfy him. But we still have to fight that those souls do not go to hell. Do you know why it will not satisfy the devil? It is because he does not get the worship of men. You see, he does not just want the soul, but he wants their worship. And I'll tell you what happens. The moment when people are faced with death, when they are faced with that moment of truth, when they are faced with hell, guess what? They realize that almighty God was the only true and living God, but it is too late. So when they get into hell, nobody worships Satan. Nobody worships the devil. But just as the scripture says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You see the devil, he's after worship. And though we lose those souls, those souls never end up worshipping him. That is why he's never satisfied. That is why he's competing here upon the earth to see how much worship he could get. But those who God gets into his heaven, they worship him night and day. They bow before his throne night and day. He is the center of their passion. He is the center of their lives. And Satan will always be jealous of those who would make it to be in the heavenly kingdom because those who go to hell, they don't worship him. So that means he will never win. He will never win. But think about every soul that slips into hell. Think about those who find themselves there and then realize it is too late because the judgment is set. They realize that there's no way out. I saw a testimony of a 25-year-old young man. He just suddenly, his, his father's a, a minister, his father's a pastor. And he was, you know, a lukewarm Christian, I would say, lukewarm. Just, you know, just doing what he does. And he had an experience where all of a sudden he had high fevers and stuff. This was just January of this year. And with those high fevers, as the father's rushing him to the hospital, he just seized up and he went and he died. And his experience was that he found himself in hell. He was in hell and he said it was hot. And he said while he was there, all he could remember is how good God was to him when he was upon the earth and he took it for granted. He said that is what was torturing him in hell, the goodness of God. You see, there's no worshiping Satan when you get to hell, but you long for the God that you missed. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to take this opportunity today and I pray that you have listened to the, the message this far that you could hear this. I pray that you will surrender your heart to Jesus Christ and live for him. We are in a war, whether you like it or not. The war is between God and the devil. I know you feel that this is your life and you could do whatever you want with your life, but this is real. We have to choose one or the other. We cannot stay in the middle. We cannot stay on the fence. Make a decision today. And if you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, you will not make it into his 
is heaven. It is whoever you choose to serve that you will stay with for eternity. So if that is you, say this prayer with me. I have the prayer in the description box on my YouTube page. However, say this prayer with me now if you don't know Jesus because the time is short. We do not know the day and we do not know the hour, but we can see the season. We can see that we are in a season where the scriptures are being fulfilled. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. But I cannot save myself. Lord Jesus, you loved me enough to go to that cross for me and to pay the price for me. And so today, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you and I ask you to come in. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Take away my sin. Be my Lord, be my Savior, and I will live for you from this day forward. Thank you for loving me, Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving me today. Amen and amen. If you have said this prayer, I want you to look for my email. The, the email address is right there on the YouTube site. It's the overflow tt at gmail.com, but it's right there. I want you to send me an email and I will help you, you know, to walk this walk, you know, give you some encouraging material and so. But please, this is the time to step out of the devil's kingdom and to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. I pray that, you know, those of you who are saved, you are believers that you will heed this message and that you will begin to fight with God for the souls of men. Show men on the broad way that there's another way. Help them to find the narrow way. Amen. God bless you. I love you all. And by the grace of God, we'll be here again next week. Amen.